Show of hands, how many people here have ever considered owning a forest? Okay. For most of us, it sounds like something related to World Planted Tree Day, perhaps. What if I could tell you a little bit more about forestry and tree growing, the challenges and how you individually can build wealth by simply investing in forests? To start, let me provide you with some context about forestry in Zambia and tree growing as a whole. Zambia is endowed with vast areas covered by natural forests. According to a 2016 Integrated Land Use Assessment Report, 61% of the country's land area of about 75 million hectares are covered by natural forests. These important forest resources provide environmental services, valuable habitat for wildlife, food, and of course, industrial raw materials, or wood, as you would think of it. The country also has a relatively high deforestation rate. Deforestation in Zambia is heavily linked to rural poverty. Over 70% of deforestation is on account of agricultural expansion and charcoal production. With a young and fast-growing population, Zambians demand more food every year, and that means more land is opened up to farm that food. We can aim to address this by implementing climate-smart initiatives, optimizing land use, and of course, maximizing crop yield. For, for charcoal production, it provides one of the simplest and oftentimes only income source for Zambia's poorest farmers. So as we seek to lessen deforestation, it is paramount that more sustainable, alternative, short and long-term income generating activities can substitute these undesirable ones. Zambia, like many countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, has a growing wood deficit crisis with demand continuing to outstrip supply every year. This has been the case for over a decade now. In other words, we consume way more wood than we produce locally. This is due to a number of reasons, but mainly unsustainable forest management practices that are resulting in huge losses in socioeconomic activity every single year. With this growing demand supply gap, we need to invest in forests, and there are several benefits to doing this. First and foremost, forests massively contribute to our climate change objectives, sequestering millions of tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere every year and maintaining huge carbon sinks in the form of biomass. Wood is also a much more sustainable construction material, especially when compared to steel or concrete. According to the International Energy Agency, the cement industry is responsible for 8% of global CO2 emissions. For context, if the cement industry were a country, it would be the third largest emitter of CO2 after China and the US. And so maximizing wood in construction is a key component to ensuring we can meet our 1.5 degree mitigation target. Secondly, Forests are fixed, tangible assets that can be insured and used as collateral to access lines of credit at both a personal and business level. They offer a great store of value, especially during down markets. Thirdly, forests provide an opportunity for individuals to diversify their investment portfolio. Unlike traditional asset classes like real estate or government securities, they are delinked from general macroeconomics as trees grow in size and value every single day, regardless of the changes in the macroeconomics. Last but not least, forest assets provide extremely compelling financial returns to forest owners, with large liquidity events occurring at the time of maturity. And so one might ask, with all these benefits, why don't Zambians actively participate in growing trees? Well, the forestry industry in Zambia has primarily been run by the government, and private individuals have shunned investments in the sector for a number of reasons. The first one being, it typically takes a long time for forest assets to mature. Depending on the tree species and plantation rotation cycle, it could range from 10 to 25 years. And for most Zambians, they don't seem to like the idea of waiting that long, even though the time will pass. The second reason, is there's generally a lack of information and knowledge about the economics of forestry. Questions such as what trees to plant and where, at what point can an individual expect a return, 
And what does that return actually look like? Come to mind. And thirdly, there's generally a limited skill set in as far as implementing best practice forest management techniques. How to go about establishing and managing a productive forest plantation. To better understand this problem, we looked at some data for three countries, Finland, Tanzania, and of course our own country here, Zambia, and focused on understanding three things, the country population and the forestry sector in general, the percent contribution of forestry to GDP, and the percent ownership of those forests in those countries. Now, Finland is a developed nation with a population of about 5.5 million people. The country has had a long history in the forestry sector, with industries dating back to the 19th century. The value added by the forest sector in the country in 2018 was reported at 4.5% of the Finnish GDP. Here's the interesting part, though. Finland's forests are largely privately owned at 61%. The state is the second largest owner at 26%, and companies own about 8%. A staggering 80% of, of the wood utilized domestically comes from those private forest owners. Tanzania, our East African neighbor, has some interesting similarities with that of Finland. With a population of about 67.4 million people, Tanzanians in the Southern Highlands region have been growing trees for several decades now and have built that into their culture. This is proven by the fact that 73% of tree plantations in that region belong to smallholder farmers, while the government only owns 17% and private companies only 10%. Tanzania has an open market approach, and therefore tree growers are able to sell their trees at any point to gain revenue. The forestry sector in the country contributes 3.5% to Tanzania's GDP. Now, in the case of Zambia, the governance structure is such that 63% of forests are under customary ownership. The state is the second largest owner at about 26%, and private ownership is only at 5.4%. The forestry sector here in Zambia is a subsector of agriculture and only contributes formally 0.8% to Zambia's GDP. So by looking at this data, it is clear that Zambians, in their individual capacities, can and should start owning forests, not only as a wealth building tool, but to increase the sector's outputs and therefore contribution to GDP. Allow me to introduce Enery, a company focused on facilitating private forest ownership for Zambians as an investment vehicle. The company is working to build sustainable generational wealth for Zambians through micro-plantations. Tackling climate change and a growing wood deficit, we have developed and continue to develop innovative ways of increasing investments in commercial forests, reducing deforestation and its impacts, while uplifting the lives of rural communities and providing compelling returns to investors. On our journey, attempting to implement Zambia's first large-scale tree outgrower project, we uncovered how commercial forestry, if done well, can build and maintain generational wealth for Zambia's poorest farmers, giving us the promise that we can graduate them from extreme poverty to the middle class within one generation. Our goal initially was to increase awareness and help the public place value on standing trees. We quickly realized, though, that in order for our intervention or any intervention to be sustainable, it had to be congruent to the outstanding development challenges we face. The biggest challenge we face in Zambia, and in many parts of the world, is poverty. And so to get Zambians out of poverty, we need to build wealth. Wealth in this case being defined as a measure of the total value of assets, of worth owned by a person, a community, a company or a country. Wealth is determined by taking the total market value of all physical and intangible assets of worth and then subtracting all debts. Essentially, wealth is the accumulation of scarce resources. And as we have just learned, forests in Zambia are becoming just that. As you're thinking about investing for your dream retirement home or a stress-free university education for your children, 
think forest ownership. Let's say you have an idle, undeveloped piece of land, and I know many Zambians here who do, that you have plans to develop or cultivate something on at some later stage in life. Wouldn't it make sense to start growing a forest right now, which, unlike cash crops, isn't as involving from a management standpoint, but still provides amazing value? In our experience, every hectare of forest plantation established can generate up to 1.2 million kwacha for the forest owner. Add a few more hectares and you can quickly see how that starts to add up. I challenge you, no, I implore you to take on a fresh perspective on what to do with any idle piece of land. Invest in a forest and get going on your journey to building wealth and becoming an active participant in Zambia's development goals. Thank you.